and we'll give this another shot. Hey YouTube, um, this is my first time ever doing something like this. Well, technically it's my second time because the first time didn't go through, and I lost the file. But that's that's something weird. Um, this is just something I'm doing to kind of document my thoughts and put them out there and let people, I suppose, see into my life if they want to, and if not, whatever. I'll, I'll give some background. My name is Derek Zoma. I'm 21 years old, and I'm Australian who has recently moved to England. I'm of English and Dutch descent, so it, it's not uncommon for someone like me to come here, and my accent isn't quite as strong as most Australians. Um, I was born in Middagong, so I have a very country or small town accent from Australia. We'll get different accents in Australia, don't ask. And yeah, um, I'm currently living in Bista with my girlfriend and her parents, and I work at a pub called Bear Farm Pub down the road. I'm, I'm not looking great right now just because I've just come from work, and it's just kind of documenting my thoughts that I had while I was talking to... You know, serving to the people. Well, I'll serve you now, Carl. Leave it there. Anyway, um, I, I will eventually get around to doing something called Aussie in England, which will just be exploring my thoughts and experiences since I've come to England, my, my troubles, my struggles. I've been here for about six months now, so I'm not new to the country, but I'm not quite settled yet. Um... And I, I'll, I'll kind of go over the difficulties of moving country and talking about it all, and I'll be able to give a more wholesome thought now that I've come out the other side and I've managed to finally get it settled and set up. I'm studying journalism at CQ University. I'm doing distance right now, and um, yeah, um, I should be exchanging to England. Well, I am exchanging to England. That's an entire other thing. Anyway, um. As I said, it's just document my thoughts, nothing more, nothing less. If you're interested, stick around. If you're not, feel free to leave. I'm going to apologize for the quality straight up. I'm using my laptop's stock microphone and stock camera. I do have a headset, but I don't know where it is, and I figured I might let you guys have a proper look at me before I try going to have a headset on and doing anything else. I'm really, really sorry for the low quality. Sorry for the voice. Sorry for all of it. Uh... uh so you're probably going to wonder about the title, The Three Steps of Life. I, I've, I've kind of been thinking a lot lately. And there's this idea that history goes in cycles and the human race goes in circles. And the anime Gundam Wing refers to it as an endless waltz in the movie Endless Waltz, which I, I will highly recommend. But it basically, it's three beats and people dance in a circle and they kind of spin. And... The idea is that you have the giant circle, which is everyone spinning around, and hundreds of smaller circles within that. And after thinking about it, I think, as a civilization, our three beats are calm. So when everything is calm, when nothing, when we're not stirring up anything, and we're trying to repair and rebuild and progress, then you have propaganda, which is when we're stirring people up, we're making people hate, where we're driving forward a motion, an idea. We're trying to instill it and push it. And then the third one is war. So obviously, war is it, when we actually try and push for it and when we go for it. And you get hundreds of small forms of war. It, it can be as simple as an argument. It can be as huge as actual war, nuclear warfare, etc. And going on from that, I think we've come out of our most recent calm phase a while ago. I think the calm phase for us was after World War II, 50s, 60s, out of push 70s. After that, we definitely entered propaganda, and you'll see this in America, you see this in Australia, and you definitely see it in places like England. Um, examples are things like, in Australia, the Australian government, around 20 or so years ago, started to vilify the asylum seekers coming to Australia. And while some of them are dangerous and some of them aren't quite right, the majority of them aren't that dangerous. And what we did is we showed one side of the argument. So we showed people burning buildings, we showed people rioting, we showed people pushing for all of that. What we didn't show on the other side of that was the sexual assault going on in the asylum camps. The fact we tried to sell our asylum seekers as slaves at one point. The fact that we, we've you know, literally nailed people's hands into chairs. And these are all reports that you can find online. There was a mini, a mini documentary series on it in Australia that was done by, I think, the BBC. 
the, the big issue is that we've kind of pushed for no one to really know about it. And it, it, it's interesting because we are trying to show one side of an argument to make everyone hate that individual so that we can persecute that individual and gain, I suppose, fame for it or gain momentum. We, we, we get the support of the country by making us all hate innocent people and specifically people who can't speak up for themselves. And America is, is probably the most guilty of this that I know of. Um, there's no denying that the country is very inward. It's very, very hard to, on national television, or well, on public television, find all the information on both sides of the story. It's, it's normally from one side or one perspective. Um, it, it's, you, they don't really show you what's going on in the rest of the world. Not as much, at least. Like, England... You turn on the TV and you get international news stations and they interrupt local news with international news. And it's just amazingly easy to get information on the world here. And Australia is actually really, really bad for it as well. It's as bad as America is, arguably, where you have to actually look for channels that specifically go for international news or you have to look it up yourself online. And it just kind of it keeps us all very within ourselves and within our own mind and inside the country. And I suppose everyone... We all kind of accept that we, we have this, that World War Three or whatever happens next is coming. That the next major conflict is hurtling towards us and we just kind of leave it there. And we occasionally get people who get up and will try and push against it or people who are really aware of it and will try and stop it. But for the most part, we just kind of accept it. And there's a line there between acceptance and awareness. I think we need to be aware as opposed to accepting it. And the, the distinction is in the herd mentality versus the individual mentality. Where humans, because we're very social creatures, we tend to go on a herd. We go with what people tr we trust say. We, we believe what we're told. We don't really look into it or think about it too much. We just kind of accept it. And I think we need to stop that and we need to become more aware. We, we need to not necessarily stop trusting people. Trust people, but look into what they're saying. Make sure that what they're saying is something you agree with and that you personally believe is true. Um, I'm trying to think what else now. Well, I don't know. I, I just I am stuck on this idea of the three cycles being calm, propaganda, and I'll call it conflict, not war. And we've seen this many times, small on a smaller scale everywhere. Like we we've seen the entire thing with Iran and Iraq. We've seen Vietnam. We've seen all of that, and it's always. We always persecute them. We always make them seem worse than they are and seem evil and seem corrupt and like they're the villains so that we can feel just in what we're doing and that we have to stop them or they'll do the same to us and it's it's no one is in the right here. And there's also this inherent want to blame people who aren't at fault. So you get things like UKIP and that's a kind of propaganda as well. That That's telling us that the immigrants are the ones who are at fault. That's telling us that people coming from the outside are at fault. And that, in a lot of ways, it's, it's Anti-productive, I suppose. It's, it's against what you want, because eventually, even if you do close off all immigration and all tourism, you will stop money from leaving you. Well, no, money's going to leave your country because you need to buy resources, but money's not going to come into your country because no one's coming into your country to get things or to buy things or to... You kind of stagnate your country. You stop money from freely flowing between countries. And if you want to have moderately well off countries, you, you need that. You need open barriers, not not one hundred percent. You need to stop people who you know obviously need to be stopped from getting in. But you need you need a healthy flow of people going out and then in, and kind of keep that money flowing and rolling around and going around the world. And it's just it's interesting because we seem to be hitting that stagnation, and that stagnation is leading to propaganda, which will lead to war. And the stagnation isn't a result of calm; it's a result of propaganda again. It is someone deciding that something was someone's fault. Everyone else going, okay, we need someone to blame, and I don't want to be the one at fault, so I'll blame them instead, and it just kind of rolls on from there. And the end result is that you just kind of you end up with belief systems. And I have nothing against belief systems, but I think they're very, very dangerous. And by belief system, I don't mean just religion. I mean, you know, governments, huge bodies, groups in general, um, where people start to act as a herd and have things snowball out of control as opposed to think about it themselves, look it up, and stand up for what they genuinely believe. And again, I, I feel we need that push for what we genuinely believe if we're to pull ourselves out of the cycle. And I'm kind of annoyed by it because we now have the resources, determination, skill set, and sciences 
to kind of to break this cycle, to have a, a, a society that is self-sustaining and won't inherently shatter and break. And again, you see the cycle everywhere. You see it with the Egyptians, you see it with the Athens, you see it with the Spartans even, you, you see it with the Greeks, you see it with, I'm trying to think, you, you see it with the Vikings, you see it everywhere. It is, is, this was a very, very prominent thing. There's always this propaganda, there's always this insistence that they are the evil ones, that they are the demons, that they're not right, and then we attack them. We attack them without really thinking about it, or without really justifying it, and our justification is they're to blame. Instead of sharing the blame and, and, and accepting it and pushing for it and letting it go outwards and working together to fix things. The, the question here is just how do you fix it? What do you do? And I'd love to hear anyone's thoughts on that if anyone wants to share or say anything or leave a video response and I'll, I'll watch it. As long as it's as long as it's polite and well thought out. And if I've insulted anyone, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't intend to. It is just, this is the reality we live in as a planet. And it's just... I don't know. What are your thoughts on it? Anyway, um, as I said before, I'll probably be doing a series called Aussie in England, where I'll be exploring the difficulties of being an Australian, which is, you know, it, it's a very, very outward thing, whether we realise it or not. We could be the most introverted Australian, we're still quite outward. Moving to England, which is a country which is very, very inward in, in the more populated areas, and as well as just kind of sorting out all the legal stuff to get a job and get set up and get a home and I might even do some stuff in my university studies, who knows. Anyway, hopefully I'll see you again and yeah, it was nice to talk. Ciao.